Orhan Aksoy, often known as the Parcel Murderer, is a Turkish serial killer who murdered five individuals in and around Istanbul between 2000 and 2001, placing their bodies into cardboard boxes that he abandoned in open areas or near construction sites. He was sentenced to five life sentences and two years of solitary confinement in prison for his crimes. Orhan Aksoy was born on September 16, 1971, in the Turkish port city of Samsun, where his family had relocated from Sermin. He was the youngest of nine children. While he was still a child, his entire family relocated to Bursa, Turkey. In addition to being beaten severely by their father, Ahmet, Aksoy and his siblings were subjected to a barrage of beatings for the least of infractions. Later, in an interview with two of his older sisters, Perihan and Ruvide, the sisters stated that when Aksoy was a child and their home was under construction, he was running around when he tripped and struck his head on the concrete. Since that occurrence, he has woken up in the middle of the night, crying and shrieking that some unseen forces were on his trail and were about to catch up with him. Aksoy ran away from home when he was 20 years old and relocated to Istanbul, where he supported himself by stealing until he was apprehended and sentenced to five years in prison for 10 counts of theft and one act of fraud. In order to receive treatment for tuberculosis, Aksoy relocated to Bucharest, Romania, following the completion of his sentence. His residence there led to his meeting and marrying his kindergarten teacher, whom he brought back to Turkey with him and gave the surname Mine. This was also the time period in which Aksoy began working as a busboy at a restaurant and gave birth to two children, Essen and Essen. Eventually, he quit his job and began working as a peddler to supplement his income. The entire country was then devastated by a series of earthquakes, forcing Aksoy's wife to request that he return to his own country of Romania. The decision was made by Orhan, who allowed his wife and children to relocate to Bucharest while he remained in Istanbul and rented out a bachelor's room in the Asamba neighborhood. In order to survive, Aksoy killed people for minor offenses, extorted them, or stole their possessions. This was his method of operation. To do this, he soaked them in alcohol before strangling them with a nylon rope to prevent any blood from being spilled, as the sight of blood made him feel uncomfortable. The corpses were submerged underwater for a lengthy amount of time, and they were covered with either newspapers or silicone to hide the body odors emerging from the decomposing bodies, all in an attempt to remove any and all evidence of wrongdoing. Later, he would admit to chatting with the dead while drowning them in the river. Between October 2000 and January 2001, he was responsible for the deaths of five persons. The names of these people were as follows. Mehmeti Yezliela is a fellow busboy who also happens to be Oxoy's roommate. On October 9, 2000, as Oxoy was sleeping in his residence in Fadi, he murdered Yezliela because he suspected she had stolen his phone, according to police. After that, he placed his body in a box and dumped it in Yenabazna Lake. Oxoy has a pal named Hakan Kaya. Because he suspected Kaya of stealing certain goods from his flat, as well as the fact that they held opposing political viewpoints, Aksoy invited her over for a drink on November 23, which she accepted. When Kaya had become drunk enough, Aksoy proceeded to strangle him with a nylon rope before packing him in a box and abandoning him in an open field in Kemerburgas, where he died. Turgut Erkan is a Turkish actor and friend of Aksoy. Having reason to believe that he was suspicious of his friend Hokan's absence, Aksoy asked him to his home for a drink on November 30. As soon as Erkan became inebriated enough, Aksoy strangled him as well, before stuffing his body into a box and dumping it near Ghazi Osman Pasha. Mer Iker, a fellow vendor, Iker was singled out by Aksoy for insulting a Romanian woman, which angered him personally because his wife is a Romanian. On January 16, 2001, he was lured to Aksoy's home, where he was plied with alcohol before being strangled with the nylon rope. However, unlike the previous victims, his body was dumped in a municipal garbage bin at a construction site in Fadi, rather than being buried. Ali Riza Drizalu, an associate of Aksoy who was behind on an 80 million lira loan, Drizalu was invited to the residence on January 17, where he was immediately forced to drink alcoholic beverages and strangled as a result of his behavior. His corpse was subsequently packed into a box and dumped in a park in Ghazi Osman Pasha, where it remains today. The first box was discovered by police on January 16, 2001, and the rest of the boxes were uncovered throughout the course of the following several days. Because of the nature of the crimes, the victims were discovered naked and taped all over, it was initially assumed that they were the victims of Hezbollah militants. However, this was later disproved. As a result, after Yezliela was definitely recognized, police officers, who had observed that his phone had gone stolen, maintained an eye on the device's tracking data, ultimately receiving an alert from Bursa. As a result, on January 26, 2001, 
Orhan Oksoy was apprehended without delay in Istanbul. During further police interrogations, Oksoy admitted to the deaths and made a number of odd assertions, including claiming that he had become a vegetarian after the first murder was committed. Nonetheless, his most damaging admission was his obvious fondness for murder, his lack of remorse, and his likelihood of reoffending if he were to be allowed to go free. The fact that he was convicted did not convince his family members, who maintained that he was incapable of committing such heinous crimes. When confronted with his confessions at trial, Oksoy claimed that he was physically incapable of lifting the heavy boxes with the bodies inside and that he confessed as a result of watching many Turkish crime dramas and foreign films such as Once Upon a Time in America and Police Academy, which he claimed had inspired him. Following his bizarre behavior in court, which included an incident in which he threw his watch at the judge, concerns were raised about his mental health. He was found not guilty. The prosecution, which had initially sought the death sentence, eventually settled on seeking life imprisonment for each murder accusation. When Oxoy was sentenced to five life sentences and two years in solitary confinement, it was in June 2004 that he made history. On October 26, 2001, Oxoy's father Ahmet passed away in Bursa, Turkey. He had divorced his wife and had moved to a residence in Bursa at the time of his death. He had placed a plastic bag over his head, which he had fastened with duct tape in a manner that was strikingly similar to the manner in which his son's victims had been bound. After extensively examining the fingerprints, the gendarmerie determined that they belonged to the man's renter, Hazamed and Karaja, who had been convicted of extortion. Many believe that Oksoy committed the murders in retaliation for his own crimes against the community.